One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told, eight for a wish, nine for a kiss, ten for a bird you must not miss. So they can always say to them, hello Mr Magpie, how's your wife today? Um, you can spin around three times, spit over your left shoulder three times, um, or tip your hat to them, or you can flap like a magpie. I always say I like accidentally fell into working with birds. Um, I did some work experience and worked with penguins and um, some parrots and some lorikeets and just kind of like it's hooked. Um, so with Long Leap, um, I started off there doing work experience for my college course. So I learnt lots of really cool management skills and um, like medicating penguins and looking after them. And yeah, stuck there. And then applied for Chester Zoo and not thinking I'd get it. And um, so I worked on the bird team for a year and I was on the subsection of waterfowl. But I'm actually really glad I was on that section because it actually involved a lot more than I thought. So I was working with vultures, cranes, uh, wattle cranes, crown cranes, storks, um, some big Asian hornbills as well. Yeah, I learned a lot from that team and um, about the care of lots of different birds, which was really, really cool. Um, so when uh, Christ was crucified on the cross, apparently magpies sat on the cross and didn't cry for him or show any signs of mourning. They just kind of sat there. And, and then also it's um, said that they were the only animal to refuse to go on Noah's Ark. So I know that my mum taught me the rhyme when I was younger. Um, yeah, whenever I see a magpie, I'll always look out for another one um, to see if his friend's nearby. And then if I don't see one, I'll to a little. You never see like a prince with a raven or something. It's always the bad guy or um, the evil witch or something that has a crow or a raven or something. Um, so they're always, yeah, they're always portrayed as like something negative. Um, so they're just, they're just really smart, um, especially compared to what the general public might think of them. They are um, a lot more switched on than you, you'd know. My flat in Salford looks up back onto the River Irwell and there's a tree right outside our window and um, there's a pair of magpies um, that are always hopping around and um, yeah, sitting there and I like to watch them. It's nice that um, you can watch them and almost see the like mischief in them um, as they like look around for things and um, and make a mess. It's, I just find it quite amusing and they're funny to watch. So I think without people really thinking about it, the, the superstitions are still in like the back of some people's minds and it's just been passed down. You don't get many people getting excited about seeing a magpie in their garden or down the street. So I think if people thought about them more, even just like putting a bird feeder out in the garden, um, then they wouldn't have to go rooting through the bins and things. The patterns in the feathers and the and like the different shapes of the bills and stuff. Everywhere you go you can see a bird. Like there'll be birds everywhere. People have just kind of lost touch with like nature and um don't really think of it as like a necessity anymore almost like going out into nature most people anyway people are definitely missing out but because we have luckily like peel park and the meadow the places for them to like escape to and there's quite a lot of hedgerows and planting especially around salford uni so even just in my back garden um there's a lot more that you think if you know what to look for people almost forget that they need help um, I need protecting. I think I'll definitely stick with birds if I can in the future. I hope to go and do an internship in America at a crane foundation um, after university or um, at one of the wildlife uh, WWT centres here. Definitely working with them in some way.